Right. Well, I mean, we know that 90% of brain development happens before age five, right? So that really is the prime time for children to be exposed and to learn and to engage. And we know it's relationship-based. Um, and that if that doesn't happen, it's much harder later to learn those skills. What is in the best interest of the child? What helps this child to grow? What helps this child to develop? What helps this child to be his or her best self? Uh, we know, without question, that there are ways to systematically improve the lives of about 15% children born in the United States. If you believe in education, you've got to start at the beginning so that those foundations are there and those brains are really curious and ready to learn so that they can do those higher level things that you need them to do down the road. My name is Chris Myers. I'm the Smart Beginnings uh, Program Director here in the Greater Roanoke area. A lot of people think about school starting in kindergarten and they don't realize there's this five years of tremendous brain growth that really can lay that healthy foundation for success down the road. And so we kind of think of birth um, all the way through the education continuum and to make those early childhood years just as important. Well, I have the longest running uh, study ever done on early childhood education that began essentially at birth and the oldest children are now mid-40s. Uh, I'm Craig Ramey. I'm a senior scientist here at the Virginia Tech Curry Research Institute and a professor of psychology uh, and pediatrics. What we know is that we can take children from extremely disadvantaged families if we provide them with a good early childhood education and good health care and good nutrition, we can have them go to kindergarten indistinguishable from children from middle class families. There are these fundamental changes in biology that are the result of a high quality early education. And we can give them a middle class outcome if we're willing to do two things. One, get an early education to them while they're still infants, and two, make sure it is of high quality and it has teachers in it who really know how to undergird and support development. I will sometimes have students ask me, what will it take for me to get a job, or could I get a, go get a job at a local child care program? And I will say, well, you're 18 and breathing. And that's what's required in Virginia. Very, very minimal standards. Head Start federally and obviously locally goes way beyond that. My name is Kim Gregory and I am the Early Childhood Program Head at Virginia Western Community College. Um, I'm also now on the board for TAP. There are lots of things um, from my perspective as someone who's in higher ed that TAP does really well and this is a Head Start standard is the qualifications and training required of staff. Head Start teachers are um, held to a much higher standard as far as what they need to have for education, what they need to have for training, what their curriculum looks like in their classroom, what their interactions look like in a classroom. And a lot of those early behavior type um, pieces and confidence in yourself comes from being in an environment with teachers and adults who care for you, make you feel confident, make you excited to learn, and help you get along with others. My name is Darlene Johnson. I'm lead teacher at the St. John's Head Start Center. Um, I've been actually been employed with Head Start for coming upon 30 years in March. Often in my walk in this profession, um, I've used the similarities of building a house. You've got your foundation, and you put a million dollar house on top of this crummy foundation. So, what do you anticipate that's gonna happen in the years to come? That house eventually is gonna come down because the foundation was never right. What we do is foundational. It will impact that child's life and the, and the lives that that child impacts for generations to come. And that's what I think Head Start does for children. It sets a firm foundation. And one of my friends told me about 
tap and um, the head start program. So I looked into it. I'm Tia Mitchin, my daughter's karma. She's two. Well, not, it's not just a daycare. Like they actually teach your, your kids. So the reading readiness is a big piece of it. You know, reading impacts and literacy impacts so much of what we do in any field, any career, any part of education. And so good language development skills. Being in a high quality environment like Head Start really gives them the chance to be interacted with well with teachers, read books to, talking about the alphabet and what we do with that to help them be ready to read. But then in addition to reading readiness, there's certainly a lot of math concepts that are developed. And again, it's not the, you know, drilling them, what's two plus two equals four, but an understanding of what numbers even are, what's more and less, um, patterning, measurement, you know, things that children can learn through play, but help them develop concepts so that when they do get to school and have to start memorizing facts, they understand what that means. Um, and then the third big area is really that social emotional development. I mean, children have to be ready to, you know, self-regulate themselves, to follow directions, to get along well with others. I like I like for them to be able to socialize with children their age, and you can you can definitely see the difference in a child who's been socialized with children their age. You know, they share. It's more easy for them to share or to get along with children their age. If you are going to offer a high quality early childhood education program and you're going to have children all day long, then why wouldn't you have good quality food? Children are also uh, encouraged uh, to uh, do family style uh, meal serving where they serve themselves, they pour their own milk with assistance and as they practice it more and more, they need less and less assistance. Well, food is a great occasion for socializing, for having conversation, for having enjoyable um, uh, commentary on what you're eating and what you've done during the day. And uh, it can be a tremendous uh, bond strengthener, both of peers and children and teachers. Independence is encouraged all throughout the day. There, of course, hand washing, lots of hand washing, uh, and uh, the children are go. Br they brush their teeth uh, after a meal. And after that time, then the children are um, get to choose which areas they want to work in that day. Many early childhood curriculums, you know, and Head Start uses creative curriculum, is a play-based focus. We, we know lots of research shows us that children learn through play. I always laugh when I go into Head Start classrooms. Generally, teachers in Head Start classrooms will let children choose where they're going to play and center. So there will be a conversation about where are you going to go today? And the child will say blocks. And she'll say, what are you going to do there? Because she's trying to you know, encouraging him to be thoughtful in his planning, which is a life skill, right? When we get up in the morning, we plan what we're going to do. We have to teach kids those skills. So children's work is play. That's serious business. And a lot of people don't think about it that way. You know, the understanding that what children learn through play is really significant. They don't just learn uh, their colors and their shapes and their numbers, and but they learn how to trust. They learn empathy. They learn sympathy. They learn independence. They learn that they are confident, that they are capable. They learn all these things while experience, in the Head Start experience. And for that, I mean, that, that, that's strong to me. That's, that's, that's just strong. You go in a really high quality learning center and you don't want to leave. I mean, it, it's more than just fun. It's engaging and it's stimulating. And those are the children that are going to be eager to learn they're going to be more successful down the road and they're going to be more successful in their jobs and their life as well. 
I mean, I wish every child could go to Head Start. I mean, I really do think, I mean, obviously, I'm a huge proponent of quality and early childhood education. I wish every child, no matter what income level, had an opportunity to be in a high quality early childhood program. Uh, well, first of all, I should tell you, I'm a great fan of Head Start, and I think that if you are a citizen of the United States, you deserve to start with a level playing field. And if we don't ensure that level playing field, if we ensure systematic discrimination and kids being denied access to good quality services, we will pay for it one way or another. Whether it is the conflict between the haves and the have-nots, it is the depressing uh, high unemployment, in individual cities where new businesses won't start, uh, whether it's in a Ferguson, Missouri, uh, where you have those tensions being played out this very day in dramatic and tragic uh, circumstances, we're either going to pay for it now or we're going to pay for it later. I am arguing that the scientific data are so clear that if we do what we know how to do, we can change the lives of millions of young people in this society. How much more proof do people need that we can be a more beneficent society and that it's in our interest as well as in the interest of the participants to do so?